שלום וברכה, for those who don't know who I am, so my name is Mayor Al-Kabas, from Toronto, originally Canadian, Benak, and I've been in, uh, in Breslov since the age of 16, we're almost 50, Baruch Hashem, so it's been a long ride, and uh, we picked up a lot of stuff over these years, I got to know various elders in the Breslov movement, spent a lot of time, a lot of time absorbing, and uh, over the years trying to to develop a practical handle to Rebbe teaching to the whole world. Uh, I got on fire a lot with Rebbe Nelson, especially in the book they put out in English. You probably for sure know the book, To Fire and Water by the BRI, and Rebbe Haim Kramer. That book I finished in two days, and it put me on fire. And that book was a convincing makeba uh, patish, if you want to say, that this has to be for the whole world. It can't be that just certain people can have the rest of them. And it's not for other people. It's only for certain people. It can't be. It's so universal and beneficial, his teachings. And that's how Rav Nassim viewed Rabbi Nachman, not just as like another tzaddik on the wall. You know, you can choose your tzaddik. He felt that this is, has to be for everybody. It can't be just for a select few uh, Ukraine, East, Eastern European Jews from uh, the 1800s. It couldn't be. So he saw it like that. And he meant it that it should have momentum until today, which it does. And uh, more and more people are connecting, but still more people are not connecting. And even those who are, are connecting, they have a lot of frustration how to connect to Rabbi Nachman's teachings on a very uh, practical way. So over the years, it took a long, a lot of time, and a lot of trial and error, and also personal trying out. So we've put, some, put something together called Breast of Therapy. Yeah. We're going to do it hopefully by the end of this year. It's not like a therapist in this. It's you and Rabbi Nachman and his teachings, period. With Rav Nassim, of course. And it's a whole way how to develop yourself through these teachings of the tzaddik and how to, to implement them in your life. We're going to go into ideas of one specific lesson connected to the parshas of the week of Avinu, because now we're in Avram Avinu's turf. Since Lech Lecha, we're in the turf of Vayera, Chaisara, we stop this week with Avram Avinu. We're going to Yitzchak, okay? We'll connect the Tower of Nosson thus to this amazing lesson, the Kutimon, and at the end we'll present you as a challenge. You're laughing a little, you know about the challenge already, right? All right. Some of us are newbies. Very newbies. So really I really newbies have never been to Uman or anything. So but we gave them, this, 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 was good, uh, this was a good this was a good brief yeah. summary. Okay. First, we have to go into what Rabbi Nachman says and then show you how it connects to Avram Avinu Vizat So Rabbi Nachman says like this. The biggest key to bring in Mashiach Bezat Hashem is the trait of the quality of Simcha. More than anything else, what's going to bring Mashiach is your positive attitude in your challenges and your struggles that you're going through. That even the rabbis in the Gemara Sota, they said, we don't want to be in this generation. So we're going through major challenges, whether you like it or not. Everybody walking on earth is being challenged. If it's with the children, marriage, personal issues, traumatic, this, and then in the spiritual realm, about that Hashem, whatever, health issues, okay? Everybody's being challenged. Everybody's being hit. No one's exempt. From the biggest gedolim, from to the guy who's cleaning the toilet, whatever, the janitor, whatever, the nobody, so to speak, everybody's going through a lot. He teaches Rabbi Nachman the way to bring the geula and your personal geula is simcha. A simple pasuk from Yeshaya, Ki besimcha tetzeo. Ki besimcha tetzeo. Shat is that when the Mashiach comes and the Geula and all the Jews come back to Israel, it's going to happen with joy, right? Besimcha. That's the pshat of the verse. Ki besimcha with an accompaniment of joy. Tetzeo. You come out of Galut and come back to Israel with Mashiach, the Beit HaMikdash, etc. So Rabbi Nachman goes a step forward. He says, wait, it's even a prerequisite. <clears throat> through simcha, it's it. You get out. Get out of what? Get out of anything. Anytime you're stuck in life, the key to get out is joy and not to worry. The worry and the fret, as we all know, makes the situation worse. And plus, your brain is clogged. You can't think clearly when you're faced with a challenge. You can't, you can't think clearly. You're, oh my God, why are you going to do this and that? So you think, crying out to Hashem, that, that will help. That will may help to open up what's the next stage. What, what is the real stage? It's 
and being positive and strong. A person who carries a tra trauma with him and like something like has a court case coming up and it's eating him up. He can't sleep. He can't drink. He can't learn. He can't dove and everything is like, oh my God. So that doesn't help. And he's, he's a day one, day two, if days are passing and he's just eating his fingers up. It's not the key. He says, you want to get out? See, then what you're doing, you are going to need a big dosage of simcha. There's a famous story. I've said it maybe hundreds of times, but it's so amazing. It's because I always tell, go over this amazing uh, analogy, a story. A story. It's like a, an acronym. Uh, what's the word in English? Uh, no, there's a good word. There's another better word. No, there's, a, there's even a better word. <laughs> Aphorism, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. It's a story with Rav Zusha and his brother, the high leg of Rav Elimelech, okay? They, they were traveling for a period of time incognito. They went undercover. Sadiqim would do this from time to time. He'd go undercover and no one knew who they were. They were like dressed up like regular people. Okay, no one knew who they were. And they came to a little shtetl, a village, that there was a curfew. 9 p.m., you're not allowed to be on the streets. You're on the streets, you get arrested, you're put in the jail until the morning. In the morning, they check your documents, who you are, this, this, that, to confirm, to see who you are, you know? And then, fine, because they were they did it as a prerequisite against robbers, thieves, murderers, etc. okay? So, Rav Zusha and Rabbi Melech arrived quarter to nine to this village. They didn't have time to set up where they're going to stay, their, their lina, their, you know, their, where they're going to eat and sleep and everything, the lodgings. 9 p.m., they're on the streets. Okay, the police see them, they arrest them. Nobody knows who they are. So, you know, if they revealed who they were, people would know, would make some commotion with the police. But they came incognito, no, with no gabai, no nobody. So the police take them, they put him in the jail cell. One big room, a giant room, with the toilet in the middle, and mattresses all around, and all types of people in the, in the cell, Jews, non-Jews, real criminals, innocent people. And Rav Zusha it was a summer night, so they didn't dub in Marev yet. Okay? Rav Ali Melech was sad. Rav Zusha was always the happy brother. He was the older brother and always happy. He said, Rav Melech, my brother, why are, you, why are you so sad? He said, well, my sad. Look at this. We can't dub in. We can't learn because of the smell of the bathroom in the middle of the room. And it's in front of us. It's, a, it's worse than Gehenam. At least in Gehenam, I can cry out. Nothing here. So Rav Zusha called his brother, my dear, super duper perfect brother who's never missed a Marev in his life. You perfect tzaddik, Rebbe Dimelech, Shahai tzaddik. Hashem, Bedafka, specifically, is putting you in a scenario where you can now, for the first time in your life, do the halacha like this. Like what? Halacha says clearly in Shulchan Aruch, when you're such a scenario, and you can't daven, you have to say Kratchel, you have to say Marev, you can't daven because of the toilet. So what does halacha say you do? You say in your heart, you're going to Shalom, I want to do your will, but the situation doesn't allow me to do it. And I can't daven, and I missed out the time of davening. You hear at Psalm Yilefanech, all this is say in your heart. May be your will, Hashem, that be considered as if I davened. As if. The famous Ke'ilu, Allah says, you get a reward. As if Ke'ilu, you actually davened and said, it's not what you're doing, what can you do? So he told them, my super duper brother, Hashem is giving you the opportunity to do that mitzvah like this, in this format. You should be so happy. He said, you know you're right. You're right. So I know I'm right. They started dancing in front of all the inmates. The goyim and the inmates was looking at them. These two simple Jews davening. They saw them looking at them. They grabbed everybody's hands and they made a giant circle. Okay, the warden, he hears the people singing in the, in the cell. He says, what's this noise? It's a jail. You know, it's supposed to be serious. So they said it's because of the toilet. He said, oh, really? He went into the cell. He removed the toilet out of the room. The smell passed. The windows opened, whatever. And then Razusha told him, now you can do it. Now you can do it. You see that? The solution came. Who would have expected this solution? That the warden would come and take out? Who would have, how did they get to it? Because they were happy and they started dancing, making noise. Hashem orchestrated it that this brought the solution. This is very powerful. Nachon in life, it's so hard to apply this. But this is the teaching that what Rabbi Nachman and Rabbi Nossad explained is that you want to get out of your situation. It doesn't help at all to worry, to fret, to be stressed. It doesn't help at all. Zero. Don't think maybe it helps a little. Zero. It doesn't help at all. Okay, it doesn't help at all. You want to alleviate the situation, work on happiness. Put on some music, tell jokes, act silly, be in a positive attitude, look elsewhere, think, think about the good that Hashem did for you in your life. 
but don't focus on the challenge, the trauma, the difficulty, because the nature of the trauma is it sucks you in, just absorbs everything, your brain, your heart, your emotions, everything. So what to do? No, I don't. I put a wall here. I look elsewhere. They say, but you're running with your problem. I'm not running with my problem. I'm trying to build a positive attitude. So the simcha will bring the solution for the for the for what I'm going through. Okay. So Benachman teaches this is the prerequisite to be a Jew. <clears throat> All the klalot, you remember Parashat Kitavo, 98 curses in the middle and towards the end. It says, All this will befall you. Tachat Asher, lo avadatem et Hashem elokechem, besimcha. All this will befall you because you didn't serve Hashem with joy. Okay? They always make fun of the breast livers. Where is that a mitzvah? Mitzvah be all that besimcha. Where? Where is that a mitzvah? Show me the 613 mitzvah where it says to be besimcha. <laughs> Idiot. It's the cup behind the 613. The verse says, it doesn't say, all these curses will befall you because you didn't serve Hashem. It doesn't say that. It says, because you didn't serve Hashem, besimcha uvtuv levav. That's the thing. Hashem knows if there's no simcha in your life, a person is apt to fall and drop everything, God forbid. So this is the prerequisite to serving Hashem. You can't begin if you don't have a positive attitude. Not only you have to have your chamaim and everything, for sure. But it has to be coupled with joy and appreciation and value that what you're doing makes sense. It has a value. Hashem loves you. And there's hope. And you get up and do what you have to do. First, he could have done the worst thing at nighttime. And he says, why should I get up and dive in tefillin? Anyways, I'm chayef karet, chayef mita. Anyways, I'm finished. Why should I dive in? No. You have to be a positive attitude and act like nothing happened. That's the key for serving Hashem. You can only get up and put in your tefillin and drag yourself to the shul and, and, and dive in shacharis, even at 10, 11, 12, whatever it is. The, what gets you out is that there's a simcha. I have to do this. This is why Hashem ap ap appreciates what I'm doing. This is the key. This is the key. So Nachman says, Simcha is a prerequisite for what's called doing the mitzvah with Simcha. There's doing the mitzvah and there's doing it with Simcha. Rabbi Nubachi says that in every mitzvah is hidden another mitzvah. This is Parashat Naso. When it talks about the Gershon and Merari and the Kat, it says there's Avodat Masa. Avodat avoda, a service to another service. Avoda is called a mitzvah, and is a mitzvah to another mitzvah, which was the case of that pasuk by, by um, I think it was Gershon, I think, um, I think it was Gershon, or it was all the quiet coin collected, the Levim collectively, that they say they played music while the korbanot were being offered. That's what Rashi says there. Mm -hmm. Avoda of the Levim playing music in the Beit HaMikdash, while the, as a, an avoda for the avoda of the Kohanim offering the Korbanot. And he learns this for all the mitzvot in the Torah. That for every mitzvah, for example, mitzvah of tefillin, you put on tefillin in the morning, great. Bravo, you got a mitzvah. You put on the tefillin, besimcha, you get another mitzvah. It's a mitzvah over another mitzvah. It's the, the dress behind it. Rav Nosin, he says a powerful, like a Hasidic word. He says like this, it's like really Hasidic. He says the, the simcha in doing a mitzvah is greater than the mitzvah itself. You hear this? It's like the goal of the mitzvah is to do it with joy in the simcha. The only way to get to the simcha is through the specific, you know, ramifications and qualifications of tefillin, Shabbat, Yom Kippur, tzitzit, Daka. That's the way you get to the simcha. You won't get it from drinking booze at a pub and late night. And it won't come that simcha. That's not simcha. That's tuga. The simcha amiti that we want to get to that will make me elevated is specifically through tefillin, specifically achnasat orchim, specifically a bracha. Ashayatzar, it's not any tiny thing we do. It's a it's a it's a it's a byproduct of a mitzvah and has simcha in it that I'm doing the Ratzan Hashem. This is the key, this is the simcha behind the mitzvah. That's the true simcha. Okay. So he teaches Rabbi Nachman, what's the what's the benefit of doing a mitzvah the simcha? At the end of the day, Hashem wants me to do the mitzvah, whether be simcha or not to do it. The, the power, the repercussion of doing a mitzvah with joy. Is this more than anything else speeds up the redemption? To bring the Gila to Besimcha. Doing the mitzvah Besimcha propels the mitzvah. Okay? It gets it up. The mitzvah now he teaches has such force. The mitzvah, by the way, is hidden in it Hashem's name. Mem Tzadik Vavhe. Vavhe of mitzvah is the Vavhe of Yudke Vavke. What's the Mem Tzadik? Mem Tzadik in, in the Gematria called Atbash. Atbash. Is we take the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet and fold them in two. So then the Aleph becomes like corresponding, correlating to Tav. Bet is Shin, Gimel is Resh. 
in that format it's called atbash, mem corresponds to yud, and sadi corresponds to he. So you have in the mitzvah hidden yud k and revealed vav k, Hashem's name. What a mitzvah basically is, is revealing Hashem in this world. If now it's done b'simcha, it propels the gihula more than anything else. The mitzvah is the energy of Hashem himself, yud k, vav k. When you do it b'simcha, it starts going up. It has momentum. Momentum meaning, meaning it gets everybody to wake up. It awakens everybody. It awakens your whole around your surrounding. When you that's a famous idea that they say, when you're happy, the world is smiling back at you. When you're when you're happy, everyone's happy, right? When you're sad, everyone's sad. Because you built your world. You did de, you determine how your world will be. So when you do a mitzvah b'simcha, you're happy, you're doing the mitzvah b'simcha, the mitzvah has uh, a ripple effect on your whole surrounding that everything is positive because you did it the same class. So now it has a repercussion that people want to wake up and also serve Hashem. Your surrounding is helping. It's adding to your goal to come closer. It's just adding. It's not the obstacles now. It's not the biggest enemies are making peace with you. The biggest obstacles are now helping you. You had a washing machine that didn't work for two months and you're driving nuts trying to get the technician to come. Every time he comes, there's no problem with the machine. What are you talking about? He leaves, there's a problem again, and you're going nuts, okay? But then you decide, you know what? I'm not going to fight this. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to become broken because of this. I'm going to work on being besimcha. And all of a sudden, the machine works. What happened? You being besimcha, doing the mitzvah besimcha, has a repercussion on your surrounding that now everyone is helping you and assisting you to come close to Hashem. And also, they also are interested in connecting to God. So he teaches the first stage of a mitzvah being done by Simcha, as it gets an arousal, the next stage after that is that it causes bracha. The key for bracha to come down to this world is the Simcha and doing a mitzvah. When you do a mitzvah by Simcha, this is the key for the bracha. That's what he said, key Simcha tetzel. When I want to get out of a situation, a difficulty, the Simcha and doing the mitzvah is what will activate the bracha to come down, the blessing to come down. And the greatest blessing, the greatest blessing is the understanding that Hashem has sent you in your life everything you need. The greatest bracha, da'at kanita, ma chasarta, da'at chasarta, ma kanita. Right? If you acquired wisdom, what do you lack? And if you lack wisdom, what do you have? The main bracha is the awareness that Hashem gives you. Everything you need is in your life. There was a, a breast liver, maybe 100 years ago. He lived in he lived in, uh, in Tzfat, and he would walk every day to Meron and back. He was very broken up on wagon, horses, whatever. He would walk on foot, you know, that's like about two, three hours from Tzfat to Meron, to the land there, to learn whatever, and walk back, okay? His shoes wore out. <laughs> After like a few times walking that much, about 100 years ago, the quality of the shoes back then, right? His shoes wore out. And he had no money to buy new shoes. So he said, Hashem, or give me new shoes, or give me the dot that I don't need new shoes. And everything I need is money. But to stay sad and worried, Hashem, no one gains. It's not a benefit for anybody. So his key is the dot. That's what we're trying to say here. That when now you have simcha, it brings you the dot that what you need in life is right next to you. It's the greatest, key, the greatest gift. And this dot, when you're opened up to the bracha of this awareness that Hashem is next to you, with you, and He sends you everything you need, you are now fit to perceive Hashem at the highest levels. The Kabbalah calls this to perceive the infinite light. It's a very high, high term. To perceive the infinite light means to see Hashem everywhere in your life. To, see, to reach a level where everywhere you turn, you see God. Okay, other people may think you're nuts. But when you reach this level, it's between you and, and Hashem. I'm able to live comfortably. I'm able to be happy. I'm not angry anymore. I reach the level I have. I'm calm. And I'm, in, I'm one with Hashem in my daily struggles. I don't feel the pain anymore. I don't feel the challenge. I see Hashem behind everything. That's a big gift. It's an amazing gift that a person's able to be one with Hashem with everything they're going through. That's called experiencing the infinite light in this world. Okay? This is a preparation for Mashiach's coming. When a Jew reaches that level, it's like his personal Mashiach has arrived. Rav Nossin, who brings down these teachings, he said about himself, my Mashiach has already arrived. He was at such a level that he saw Hashem everywhere. You can see it from his writings. This man was living so connected to Hashem, even though he was a physical person who ate and drank and slept and went to the bathroom and had to do something for Parnassah, yet he was connected. He said, my Mashiach has already come. 
That's called Mashiach way mentality, way of living. That a person is already in a future redemption mode that he's cool with everything. Nothing gets him angry anymore. Nothing breaks him. He's now complete. And he's still in this world. He's doing Torah and mitzvot. And now his goal is to spread it to other people, Bezat Hashem. Okay? This is the idea that Nachman gives in a nutshell in Lesson 24 of the Kutimah. Rav Nosen in his book, Rav Nosen is the disciple. He said, there's newbies here, right? Rav Nosen is the main disciple of Rabbi Nachman. Rabbi Nachman passed away in the year 1810 at the age of 38. And he left behind the disciple at the age of 30 at the year 1810, Rav Nosen. And he, like, as if to say, gave him a type of smicha, empowered him with the ability to develop teachings and to spread them further. It's as if he gave him a type of a smicha. He once told Rav Nosen, you are my Yehoshua. Like there was a Moshe Rabbeinu and Yehoshua Benin relationship of Rebbe and Talmud. He said that you, Rav Nosen, you're like, you're my Talmud. That means he was able to transmit, like, Perkevot, Moshe Kibel Torah Misinai, Um Saral Yehoshua. Moshe received the Torah from Sinai, passed it on to Yehoshua. Transmission of Torah is from Rebbe to Talmud. That's how it started. So too, he said, Rebbe Nachman, you are my personal, you are my, my Yehoshua, meaning you have the mission and the capability to spread and, and promote his teachings into the world, which Rav Nosen did. So he wrote a big, giant, we have it here, the Kut al you have it set here. There's an eight-volume set on how to be a Jew. It's eight volumes. In these eight volumes, he develops the teachings of Rabbi Nachman's Likut Imran, which is the set next to it there, the 15-volume set in English, Likut Imran, and he connects it to every law of the Code of Jewish Law to show you how you can apply these high concepts into day-to-day -day living. And by the way, Rav Nosen brings insights on the Parsha of the week, on Hanukkah, on Purim, on Rosh Hashanah, on Etchol. He goes into many ideas, but he doesn't forget that the idea is the practical law. What's to enhance how you're davening, how you're feeling the Shulchan Aruch. The, he once, Rav Nosen said, that what to do as a Jew, we receive from Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu gave us the Torah, what to do. How to do it, how you do the Torah, that he says is a gift you can receive from Rabbi Nachman and his teachings. How to do it with life, geschmack, chayut, connection, that people so badly want. Rav Nosen, in his book, Likut Alachot, goes, goes a little bit into the idea of Avram Avinu. There's Avram, who became eventually Avraham, with a hey. What's this hey? What makes Avram Avram? First of all, what is Avram? Who is Avram? Besides Avram being our forefather, the Zohar says, the Zohar is amazing, it is an amazing book, the Zohar, goes off tangents in a way, and says Avram refers to the Yiddish Mishama. Avram refers to every Jew. Every Jew is called Avram. With that in mind, you can take the whole story in the Parshas of the week, and apply it to yourself. Because the Zohar gives an opening that Avram represents the Jew who's searching for Hashem in his life. Every Jew is like that. Whether you're born FFB or Baal Shuvah or a convert, you're looking for Hashem in your life. At add meaning and light. So Avram is the Jew who's in search of coming to his potential of who he is. So Hashem says, Avram, your goal is to become Avraham of the Hay. What's this famous letter He? Nosen says the He in Avraham corresponds to the five sounds of Simcha. Kol Sasson, Vekol Simcha, Kol Chatan, Vekol Kala. There's another one. People don't sing in the song. I don't know why they, they stop there. Kol Amim, Hodu Lashem, Kitov, Kiram, Chazdo. Right? Something like that. Remember the verse? The verse reads, Kol, it's in your meow. Kol Sasson, Kol Simcha, Kol Chatan, Kol Kala. Kol Amim, Hodu Lashem, Kitov. When we sing this song, they stop at number four. I don't know why. They should sing also the fifth call, but this called five kolot. The five Voices of joy, each one, and we, we can go into it a bit deeply, but we don't have that much time. There's a call of a chata, there's a call of a kala, call sasson, call simcha. They refer to different variations of joy needed in various junctions and challenges in life. This time you need to apply call chata for joy, call kala, call sasson, call simcha, call omim hodun Hashem kitov. There's many types of joys. There's the joy from giving thanks to Hashem. They feel amazing that Hashem was so kind to you. Even though you did this and this and that, 
wow, Hashem, I can't, I can't stop appreciating all the goodness you did to me that I woke up in the morning. I thought I'm finished. After what I did, Hashem, in life, I thought I'm finished, and yet I'm getting up in the morning and I'm still around. Thank you, Hashem, right? That's a type of hodu hoda'a. There's a kol simcha, which is like a real simcha. He, he teaches Rav Nosen, the main simcha of life is the simcha of the future. The simcha of knowing and, and, and being uh, consoled that in the end, Hashem will have his way. In the end, everything's going to work out. So if everything's going to work out in the end, why are you worrying now? Why are we, oh my God, I'm on the way for a divorce. I lost my kids and this and that and all these crazy things. But if you know that in the end, everything will be put right, and you're not such a bad person, you are good. The challenge is making you afraid because it's scary what you're going through in life and it hurts and it's painful and this and that. But if you know that in the end, it's going to work out. So why are you just looking like this? Push the goal, far. see from far, see that everything's amazing. In the end, it's going to work out. In the end, it's going to work out. So it's another type of simcha, he says. Okay? There's another simcha of acting silly, telling jokes when you're really just, nothing can wake you up. So you, tell on, you put on some jokes and everything to crack you up and put you in a fake happy feeling because the fake happy feeling he teaches will bring you eventually to a real happy feeling. So it's so important. He says, Rabbi Nachman, people are so depressed today that the main way to get people happy today is to act silly, doing this with your payas, you know, telling jokes. This is the main way to get a person in a positive attitude. People are just, you go on the bus and the, you go to the grocery, everyone's like Tisha B'Av every day. <laughs> Tisha B'Av all day long, you know? And no one is happy. What is this? So because of that, you shouldn't fall in that trap. It's very easy to fall in that trap. What you need is to tell jokes, be happy, you know, boogie, do some stuff to make people smile. You know, that's it. That goes a long way. Even if it's fake, he teaches Rabbi Nachman, this fake joy at least builds a platform for real joy. Your goal is not the joke. And, uh, you know, people, the, the goyim of the world, when they go to like a comedy night, uh, a pub, you know, with telling jokes, you know, but everyone afterwards, we know what happens. They fall even to more depression. There's no goal of telling jokes and everything. It just stops there. Our goal as a year is to come to true simcha. We need this as a platform to come to the real joy. Fine. And our goal is something after that, not this world. When you have Olam Azeh, then they stop there. They say the biggest, the greatest depressed people are the one, the comedians, the guys who tell the jokes. They're the worst. They're the ones who are the saddest people in the world, they say. They can make other people laugh, but it's like temporary because it's not real simcha, like we said. The real simcha is the simcha and the mitzvah. That's the real joy. People don't have that. They've never tasted simcha in their life. The joy of holding a lulav and show the Zohar, what the Zohar says, <laughs> you know, when a Jew, a regular, and nobody takes an lulav and show and does the bracha, what it does, the, the Zohar says, you know, it, it can flip out when you see what a regular Jew, no kavanot, no kabbalah, no nothing. He just takes the lulav and just says a bracha, even though he doesn't know what he's saying even. You know, in the Chabad, they go around getting people to do love and etchog and putting on tefillin. What it does, even putting on tefillin, right? So it's unbelievable. That's the that's the real joy of life. That's all you take with you after 120. That's, all, that's the only thing you take with you. Not all the movies and all the nice fancy houses and the Corvettes and everything. What you take with you is the simcha of the mitzvot and the mitzvot that you did, far. Huh? What to be happy about. So he lists several types, which are referred in these five. We won't go more into details. I went into a few already, three or four already, okay? So these are examples of simcha that you need. Hashem tells Avram to become Avraham. You need Simcha. So the Parsha started like uh, two weeks ago. Lech Lecha. Lech. We want you that your mitzvah performance should have movement, motion, and arousal. To get that, which means to become Avraham. So Lech Lecha. By Hashem and Avram. Hashem tells Avram, the Jew, who's still lacking Simcha, lacking completion in his life, which is the Simcha. To become Avraham, you're going to have to leave what? What Rosen says, these are the three types of depression which attack everybody. So, is earth. Earth is the element of earth. There's four elements, the Rambam says. Not like in chemistry where they had every year they're adding a new, a new element, right? There's 67 on the element chart. You know chemistry? We were in grade seven, they had 67, and then so they added, they discovered a new element. 68, 69, right? They keep on going up. The Rambam says there's four elements, earth, wind, fire, and water. Esh, ruach, mayim, afar, okay? Each one is the root of the attributes inside of you. Your, your, your Yetzirah challenges are in four groups. So for example, 
uh, depression and sadness come from earthiness. Anger is chaos, it's from fire, right? So air also has characteristics, air-headed, whatever, you know, uh, wind. So that's air, okay? There's earth, wind, fire, water. Someone who's very watery into stavot, he's very easy to you just put a piece of cake on the table and he's like the first one to grab it because he can't control himself. It's like watery. A person is like, uh, he's not like ice. He's not like stone. He's very... So the, the Sefer Haredim is the one who opens up the midot of a person attributed to the four elements. Earth, Eretz, is the sadness a person has inert, innate inside of him. He's born, it's it's part of him. It's a challenge of every person. So Hashem tells Avram to become Avram, to get his joy, you have to battle and get rid of the depression, which is from Artsakha. You people, some people justify, oh, I'm like that. I'm very depressed and everything. And they justify, they stay that way. No, no, no. You won't come to who you are so long as you have this depression from the Artsakha. Number two, Mola Detecha. What's Mola Detecha? Oh, he's born like that. Yeah, you're right. The Ta'ava, the, the, the biggest mitzvah of, of reproduction comes through a lust. Hashem built it this way because it's the only way people are going to reproduce. There has to be this lust in order to produce children. The goal of the world has to take place. The way to get people to do it is they have to have this burning desire for it. The desire itself is a, is a representation of sadness. Because when does a person lust something? When they feel empty, right? That's it. When a person feels empty, you have the people, when they're very depressed, you have some people, they take it out on cigarettes. Some people, they just stuff their face, overeating and everything. Each one has an avenue to let out when they're very sad, right? So, so the lust, by definition, is I feel a lack. I need it to be filled. Hashem designed this greatest mitzvah, the first mitzvah of the Torah, Puravu, that it comes through a lust. So this is what King David says. Behold, through sin, iniquity, cholalti means I was shaped. And with an iniquity, sin, my mother was heated up. Just by the way, the Chazal, they teach that the night that David the Melech was conceived, his father Yishai, had in mind to be with a shifra, was the type of a maid servant they was not to be with. And his immense modesty made it that it turned out that instead of being with the maid servant, he was with the mother of David the Melech. So that's one of the nine, you know, this nine midot. The person has in mind to be with one woman and he's in one of another woman. So it's, it's considered like a type of a deficiency, a blemish. So King David said about himself, as great as he was a tzaddik and as great as his father Yishai was a tzaddik, say, they say he lived at the age of 400. 400 years old, the, 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 the angel of death couldn't find an opening to take him. The only reason they could find to take him away is nachash, that he had in him the pollution of the, the initial, the, the, the primordial snake. From, the, from the, the sin of Adam and Eve of the snake, that was the only opening that the angel of death could find to take away Yishai, because he was such a holy, holy man. So nonetheless, David, David says, that my mother was heated up with sin. Even big, so Rav Nelson brings it down that even the biggest tzaddikim, it has to come through this tava, which is a lust. And being a lust, there's a sadness associated with being born, being conceived. So again, Hashem tells Avram, the Jewish neshama, lech lecha me'ar you have to leave the sadness that you have in your four elements, challenges, the depression that comes out of Artsiut earth, how you were conceived. And number three, which everyone justifies, how you're brought up. Oh, in my house, my parents are always screaming. I never got attention. They're always looking down at me. Person has non-stop excuses. Oh, he was born like this. That's such a family and this. and That the siblings and the parents put you down and made you sad. So a person justifies, I'm like this negative because of how I grew up, how I grew up. The way people always throw it on how they grew up. Yes, it's true, but it's not an excuse. You have to get out of it. You have to get out of it. You want to become Avraham. You want to get out of Avram to become Avraham. That hey, you're gonna to have to battle and get rid of totally any trace of sadness which come from these three. No, and now what's the key for Simcha? It says, you want to have the true Simcha, your goal should be to be in Eretz Israel. Eretz Israel is the land of Simcha. Everything here is associated with joy. This is Eretz Israel, this is Hashem's land, everything is associated with Simcha. The Torah says 
that the Kohanim and the Beit HaMikdash, the temple, <clears throat> as fast as they were, which you might think, ah, oh, they're like nervous, move it, move it, move it. The Kohanim weren't like, nerve, like fast out of being nervous. They were fast zealousness out of joy. The Kohanim were happy people. They weren't like, you know, you have a picture of someone that goes very, he's very quick and he's quick out of nervousness, out of negativity. These are people who were super quick and they were happy. There's being zealous out of joy and there's being quick because I'm nervous and I want to get things done and everything like that. The Kohanim were not like that. They were happy people, the Kohanim. And it was a prerequisite to work in the Beit HaMikdash. You had to be happy. They saw a coin who was sad in the Mishmar, the, the, the Mishmar of the day. They saw a coin who was sad. You're, you're not working today. Forget it. You're not doing Korbanot. You have to be happy in order to work in the Beit HaMikdash. That was the prerequisite for the coin. They had to be besimcha. That's the Zohar says, okay? So Eretz Yisrael is the land of joy. Okay? So this is what the Torah is saying. And then the, 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 the blessings that Hashem gives them, Avarechecha, Ve'yebracha, Ve'nivrachubecha, Kol Mishpochot Adama, these are all the blessings which result, result in getting banishing the sadness and coming to Simcha, okay? So then, the key to all this, in order to banish depression and to come to joy, a person has to face what's called the exchange chambers. We didn't mention this at all yet. I should have mentioned it on Lesson 24. In order to come to true joy, <clears throat> you have to be exposed to sadness, to negativity. Because your job, your job is to elevate the happiness trapped in the domain of evil and elevating out. The mitzvah is considered something sameach. The mitzvah are the simcha of Hashem. But it's, we say in Shabbat morning, pekudei Hashem yesharem besamche lev. The mitzvah bring joy to the heart of Hashem. Besamche lev, they bring joy to Hashem's heart. The mitzvah are trapped. Your job as a Jew is to do mitzvot, to pick them up and bring them back to Hashem. What does it mean to pick them up? You're in a specific frame of mind today. You're feeling negative in this. And yet, as you are, you work to do the simcha. You work to do the simcha. Or you, so you work to do the mitzvah the simcha. That's how you pick it up. And where does the mitzvah lie? In the exchange chambers. What does that mean? Like, why does it have to be like this? Why can't it just simply serve Hashem? Like a child is taught in grade one, kindergarten, grade one, grade two. You do mitzvot and you serve Hashem. And that's how, that's how life is about. No, life is that we go into a domain of negativity and from there to do the mitzvah. In other words, you wake up negative and you have a, you have a grouch and from that you have to work to build on a simcha to get out to do the mitzvah in a positive way. Why does it have to be like that? Ah, because we are in a mixture. This whole world is called hechal hatmurot, which means the, ex the chamber of exchanges. What does that mean? This world by the de definition is called an olam. Olam means... A halama, concealment. The word olam, halama is a concealment. Hashem's light is concealed. It should be revealed, but it's switched. It's switched. Giving rule and priority to evil. Evil has the, the, the ability to cover up and confuse and mix up. So good is transferred for bad. Truth with falsehood, pure, impure, holy, unholy. Our job in exile now, especially, is now to seek out the mitzvot, do them besimcha, and extract that holiness from the exchange chambers. Okay? These are all the brachot that Avram Avinu was given. This is his job. So now, that was the, the, that was the parsha of Lech Lecha. In Vayera, the parsha starts that Avram Avinu did circumcision, and he's standing at the entrance. He's sitting. Yoshev petach ha'ohel kechom hayom. He's sitting at the entrance of the, of the tent in the heat of the day. So if Nosset explains this, this is now... Avram now became Avraham. Shem Rashi says, if you remember, that for you to become Avraham, you're missing the Brit Milah. The circumcision will bring that stage to be Avraham now. In our context, the mitzvah of Milah, which, by the way, is one of the greatest mitzvahs that the Jewish people as a whole have done with the greatest simcha. Even though it's painful. Poor kid, you know, he's, he's crying and everything. Yet, all Jewish people all over the world, all over the centuries, have done this mitzvah with greatest simcha. It's a boy, mazel tov, and we're going to slice him, you know? You know, poor kid. No, no one says poor kid. We're happy to do it. It's one of the greatest mitzvah people are, are doing with such simcha. It comes out in this, uh, this amazing mitzvah of the Brit Milah. That's why Avram, trans, the transmission from Avram to Avraham was through the mitzvah of Milah. Then, after that happening now, now he's Avraham, he, stand, he sits at the entrance of the tent in the heat of the day. The tent is now the opening to reach holiness, the next level of holiness. Okay, now Avraham. 
The goal of Ram now is to receive the infinite light, to come closer to Hashem, but the entrance is closed. So the, the Zohar says, Rav Nosson explains, Avram, who is now Avram, every Jew, he's sitting at the entrance of the tent. Why is he sitting? Pshat is he's looking for guests, which means he's looking to help other people come back to Hashem, but he himself cannot go into the tent because the tent is closed, technically. Let's, let's, let's explain this idea. The tent is closed. I can't get in. And in the meantime, it says he's sitting in the heat of the day. Rav Nosson explains that Avram, which is every Jew now, who now has worked to build up a simcha in his life, now he's being faced with a new, a new level of challenges where he's being heated up. Heated up by the Yetzirah, heated up with sexual temptations, heated up with all types of Yetzirah attacking him. As if to say, Avram Avinu, get off from this. Stop waiting. You're wasting your time. Yoshev, the word sitting, also means to wait. What's the idea? The idea is, this is around on the Zohar also, that when you see that from heaven there's an obstacle in front of you, what do you do? Do you say, ah, it's not for me, so I might as well go look elsewhere? Or do you say, no, this is my key to greatness. This is where I'm going to become my potential. I'm not budging from here until they open the door. What do you say? Do you chicken out immediately and say, well, the obstacles, you know, I can't do this. It's not for me. Yiddishkeit is not for me. To be more firm is not for me. To have a beard is not for me. Whatever. A person says all, all types of uh, rationalizations because there's obstacles. Or does he say, no, I'm Avraham. I have now the weapon of Simcha. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting at the entrance and I'm being heated up in the meantime. Yes, I'm not budging. Because that's the thing now. If that's the test here, are you going to, that the doors are closed on you? Do you leave? Do you say, why should I keep on davening? I've been davening for 20 years. I can't even concentrate on the words. I'm trying my best for 20 years. I bought all forms of art school, Sidurim, the Feldheim, the Mitsuda, that I did, I'm doing my best to concentrate and it's not happening. I might as well just stop davening. Why should I continue davening if it's like saying stones and it's so difficult? No, I know this is the key. This is the key. This is the way. So I wait here. And in the meantime, it starts attacking, heating you up and everything. This is Amavinu again standing at the tent, being heated up by the exchange chambers. But he, he waits until he gets in. And then, he, and then the next stage is he, he has now Yitzchak. The, 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 he waits, and his waiting was justified. Hashem sent angels. And one of the angels is to tell Avram, you're going to have a son. And what's the name of the son? Yitzchak. Why is he called Yitzchak? Yitzchak is called Tzchok. Rashi says, the Pasuk says, why was he called Yitzchak? Because of the joy. Again, joy pops up. Because now there's a, a higher levels. His first level of a Jew is he builds up the letter Hey. The next level that he produces now, he's able to have a byproduct. He's able to produce Yitzchak. Yitzchak is now that a person no longer has just acquired the joy. He's able to now share it with others now. That's Avraham producing Yitzchak is every Jew now who's mastered his personal challenges to overcome them with Simcha. And I was able to spread it to other people and to create Yitzchak, Tzchok, to laughter to other people. And Yitzchak is a serious dude. He's Yira, right? In the Kabbalah, Avram is Chesed, Yitzchak is Gvura, Yaakov is the goal. Yaakov is different. But for Avram to bring Yitzchak, the serious guy, it's through Tzchok, it's through being happy. That's his way to produce and to come next level, okay? Parsha also this week, Chai Sarah, okay? And also last week. Last week, if uh, Rashi brings us down by passing, it's also in the Midrash. That when Avram Avinu was preparing the three tongues for the three angels, right? So in an instance, and this is really the Midrash really, in the Zohar. One of the animals, one of the cattle, the, the, the cows ran away from Avram Avinu. Okay? So he was running after it. And, and where, was, where was Avram Avinu when this took place? It was in Hebron. He ran up to Hebron. In, in Hebron. He went into the Merata Machpelah because the cow was going into the Avram Avinu knew nothing about the Marat Machpelah. Who's buried there? Adam and Chava were buried there already. He knew nothing about it. He went into the, the cave. As soon as he walked in, he smelled the scent of Gan Eden. And he saw Adam and Chava buried there. And he's, that's why when Sarah passed away this week's parasha, he wanted to be buried there. He wanted to bury Sarah there and also by plot for him there. Okay? So, just on the side, Rabbi Nachman points out something amazing. Ephron, this week's parasha, he was so happy to get rid of that piece of land. It says that Ephron sold the land to Avram, 
He was so happy to get rid of it. It was a bargain to sell for 400 over the Socher, you know, good coins, good currency coins, over the Socher, good quality. And he was happy to get rid of it, the Zohar says. Why was he unhappy? Because for everyone, it was such a disgusting piece of land. He had no idea that Adam and Chava were buried inside. And for him, it was disgusting. And yet, Avram Avinu, the exact same piece of land, he saw, and it is, the end of Zohar says, that Chevron, Marat Machpelah, is the entrance to Gan Eden. It's the entrance to Gan Eden. Adam and Eve are buried at the entrance to Gan Eden. That's the entrance to Gan Eden. He smelt the scent and the radiance of Gan Eden. So look at this, Rabbi Nachman points out. Two people looking at the same item. Ephron sees garbage, <laughs> darkness. Avram sees what? Gan Eden. With the same item. What's going on? Again, an example of the exchange chambers. Okay? It, it, it is rightfully pure, but Ephron doesn't see it. Avram Avinu does see it. He's able to extract it. And, and what, what the, 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 today's Aliyah, Rishon, there's such a big deal in the Torah that Ephron says, no, oh, take it for free. Avram says, no, I want to pay for it. Alva, you took the money already. You know, this, why is the Torah making such a big deal? Avram Avinu wants to give you a gift, take the gift. Because he knows the only way to extract the holiness trapped there and to reveal that it's the entrance to Gan Eden is he has to pay for it. He knows Avram Avinu to take fully the holy sparks which are in Merat HaMachpelah so that Sarah will be properly buried in a holy space that will be holy until Mashiach comes with such a greatness that the whole world will be attracted to go davening there till today, right? In order for that to happen, he has to extract every single spark possible. So Avram was very strict to pay for it. He was saying, take the money already. And Avram said, okay, and he, gave, he said, give the highest currency, 400 of the, of the prime currency, take, uh, take it. The idea is, that he, he was so concerned of taking it out from the exchange chambers to reveal what it really is. Okay, so this is Avram Avinu and, and, and the, the introduction of this parsha. Just you see, the point is, we see this pattern of Avram Avinu's mission being thrown into exile. We didn't, we didn't even mention Lech Lech afterwards. Uh, Avram Avinu comes to Eretz Yisrael. Right after what? Famine. Get Go back to diaspora. Egypt, Egypt, okay. And he's worried about what? Sarah's beauty. Okay, they go to Egypt. It's not enough to go to Egypt. Paro takes Sarah, okay? And this is the worst of the worst. And what does Rashi say about the Egyptians then? They were shtufe zima. Big, big immorals. Very immoral. Very immoral and a very immoral nation. You know, it's not enough to go to the to that galut, again from Eretz Israel, but to be stuck with, you know, ich, the lowest of the low. And yet, they got out. And they just get out. But what, is, what does the Torah say in Parsha Lechacha? That Paro gave to Avram Avinu tons of gifts. Bakar, Kesed, Zahav. So Ramos explains, what's all this money? Is this his physical wealth? That's it, all it is. What Avram Avinu did again is he was kicked out. You see, he was in the Holy Land, which is the seat of joy, thrown back again to exile. Such a bad place of immorality, which is, for example, the epitome of the exchange chambers again, the Echalat Mort of evil. And yet, yeah. Rabbi Benu went there, and, and not on top of it, Sarah was in the house of Paro. They got out, extracting all the holy sparks that were trapped there, which was represented in the money and the gifts that Paro gave to Avram Abinu. Meaning he succeeded, him and Sarah. Obviously, Sarah had to fight a little. She had to tell the angel, hit, hit, right? Ach. And yet, they succeeded in getting out all the holy sparks, okay? So this pattern, Avram Abinu, is, is frequent. He's a warrior. Also, just another point, Rabbi Nelson says, the four kings. Avraham Avinu chased the four kings. The Midrash says, Midrash Rabbah says, these four kings, let me just remember the names, are Yoch, Elasar, Tidal, and Kedor Laomer. Kedor Laomer, Elasar, Tidal, right? Are Yoch. The Midrash says, these four kings correspond to the four exiles after Egypt. So the first one, I think it's Kedor Laomer, is representing ba the Babylonian exile. The second one, I think it's Ar Yoch, is, is Greek, the Greek exile. Uh, El Asar is, is Madai Achashverosh, the one to wipe out all the Jews. And the fourth one is Rome. Tidal uh, Melech Goyim. Melech Goyim, because the Roman Empire is made up of many, they conquered all the nations, they took over everything, Roman culture, Roman society. So the, the Midrash says that Avram Avinu chasing the four means that the Yidin will succeed in overcoming all four exiles. And we're in the last one, Tidal which is Melech Goyim, corresponds to Edom, which we're now in the Roman exile now. We're in the offshoots, Western culture, Western society, okay, all that technology, etc. 
This is under the category of the fourth exile, which tries to, with atheism, to get people off of Hashem Chasushalom and to bring people to sadness. Avram Avinu, Avraham, right? He's now, he, Avraham, he's chasing the four kings, meaning the success of getting out of exile, where the essence of exile is sadness, because we said the verse says, Ki with joy you'll get out. Meaning what? Hen love, love hen. That if e redemption is joy, that means exile is sadness. So the key out of exile is simcha, because exile is sadness. So Avram Avinu chasing after the four kings and succeeding in subduing them is the idea that every Yid, because Avram represents every Yid, will go into the, the, the chamber of exchanges, which we are in, in exile, and successfully extract the holiness chapter by being the simcha. So this is how Rav explains his ideas. This is our, our, key, our key, more than anything else now, Rav Nosson says, is to work on being the simcha. There's many people, many many rabbis say, we have to do this, we have to work more on this. The most important thing you have to work on more than anything else, which everything, all the other mitzvah are dependent upon, is the simcha and doing the mitzvah. Because this is the key for you extracting the holiness trapped that belongs to you, elevating it, and bring yourself out of exile. <laughs> to, to be the simcha and work on being the simcha. Okay. Okay. This was the first part of the class. Now we have another six minutes. This was all taken based on Rabbi Nachman's lesson, Likuti Moran. How Likuti Moran works, it's a phenomenal book. There's probably no other book like this in the world of the Torah. Well, okay. What happens when you learn Likuti Moran and you go over the lesson again and again and again is you begin to activate it in your life. You begin to see things changing and happening that didn't happen before. But due to your learning these ideas, you actually begin to see things. It's like funny, it's like 3D. Other people don't see what you're seeing, you do. It's something phenomenal. However, that's not the goal. Well, what we do, I see things happen. I want to change, I want to become a better person. Each lesson Rabbi Nachman revealed, as amazing as they are, and he takes you to different worlds of perceptions and everything, the goal is that you change. You become a tzaddik, you become better. On this, Rabbi Nachman instructed is this from Nussin, and he instructed everyone that there's a concept of turning Torah lessons into prayers. There's only two places we see this in our Torah culture and heritage. The Chumash and Tehillim. There's five books of the Chumash and there's five books in Tehillim. The Midrash says, why are there five books in Tehillim? These five books of Tehillim by King David and Adot Sadiqim together are prayers on the five books of the Chumash, meaning what? That the, the cries and moans of King David in, in Psalms, Hatzileni na, Shamra nafshi, all these expressions of prayer are to fulfill what's written in the five books. So for example, the book one of, of, of Talim is to fulfill what's written of whatever is mentioned in Bereshit to fulfill that. Shemot is the second book, Vayikra, third, okay? The other book we have besides that, there are two Torah books that have that, is Rabbi Nachman's Likud Moran and Prayers, Imposed by his disciple of Nosin. Rav Nosin wrote prayers on these lessons, which means the prayer, the lesson is re-expressed in prayer format. When you, for example, you learn a Gemara, okay, you learn a Gemara, and now re-expressing the Gemara in prayer, Hashem, I should be to do this and that. It's very hard for Gemara because it's a whole discussion. Whereas if you're given a hashkafa, a very high hashkafa, giving you room to find yourself in these ideas, because it's like in the Gemara, again, it's going in the nitty gritty. You can't have time to now daven about these ideas of the Shosh and Nagach or Ketubot, whatever, all the things. To make davening out of that is very far. It's very, like, not practical. Whereas if you take a Hashkafa, which is very general, and you do find what you're going through in this, and then doing prayers on these Torah ideas, Rabbi Nachman says, Hashem has never received such a delight. Lo alu sha'ashuim ka'elu me'olam. The delight of turning Torah lessons by tzaddikim and re-expressing uh, re it in prayer format is so powerful. Number one, it gets to you also. It gets to touches deep chords that you are that are dormant for like 20, 30, 40 years. Something is finally getting me to open up myself to Hashem. I'm beginning to experience prayer at a level that I never experienced in my life. Rav Nosson wrote prayers on this book called Likute Moran, called Likute Tfilot. Okay? They work hand in hand. The, the lesson, learning the lesson of Likute Moran, activates the concepts in your life and the prayer directs the healing to where it needs to be done. It's like, for example, a person, God forbid, is diagnosed with some sickness, okay? 
the medicine costs tons of money. It costs like $100,000 to get a little bottle of this medication. He finally raises the money and he has the bottle of medication. So say, oh, thank you. But you idiot, apply it to the wound. If there's a wound on the arm, you have to apply it on the place. So it's two stages. Getting the, the healing, getting the medication, the spiritual dose, whatever, and then applying it. So learning a lesson activates it. Davening about it directs it to the right areas of life that need the healing. Okay? So we prepared here uh, two PDFs. <laughs> okay? You're laughing, right? You know this already. The first PDF is we prepared here the whole lesson, lesson 24 with the English translation. Okay? Because Likud Timuran is pretty deep. And you can get lost, get caught up because Rabbi Nachman, how it works in the Kutimran, is he presents an idea and then he brings a proof to it. And you're trying, you're busy, you get you start getting busy trying to figure out how the proof fits into what he's saying. You lose track of the idea that he's trying to get across. Because of that, Rabbi Nachman himself instructed his disciple of Nasim, I want you to make an abridged version of the Likutimran, where you take out just the practical points and list them. They're so powerful, just learning the ideas already activates them also. So prepare the PDF with the entire lesson in Hebrew and English from the kids of the Bizzikot Imran, followed by the actual prayer, okay, prayer 24. It's lesson 24, prayer 24. And another PDF of a 40-day challenge. This is a challenge to all of you if you're interested, of trying for 40 days to see after 40. You won't see immediate results. It takes time. Like everything good in life takes time. A 40-day challenge to implement this lesson and the prayer in your life. It's a Pieces of the prayer, one day this day, another day. It's not overwhelming of the whole thing every day, but parts of it broken down to a half of the prayer, a third, a fourth. You'll see in the PDF. And to give a, a, attempt to use this and to see a change in your simcha. Because the goal of this lesson is the simcha. That's the most important thing, all right? So uh, because it's been recorded, I have to say this. To uh, to receive it, you can get by email. You can email me at breastlovetherapy, B-R-E-S-L-O-V, therapy at gmail.com. Or my WhatsApp number. WhatsApp, it's an American number, a Lakewood number. So it's Lakewood, it's easy to remember. So it's plus one, seven, three, two, eight hundred, eighteen, sixty-three. All right. That's the share. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.